G'day guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be talking about the Paragon Knife Making Kiln. Now, full disclosure, I got this kiln from Gamma Coat, Artisan Supplies, whatever you want to call them. I got it at a discounted price and I also got a whole bunch of my heat treating gear for free. If I say their name a few times, it's because they've really taken care of me. So this is a Paragon double barreled something rather fancy sort of kiln. Um, it's actually one of the older style kilns, so if you're getting one of the new ones, it's not going to apply to you. But there is going to be a, a lot of information that is relevant for the old ones that should still be good for the new ones. Um, from my understanding, the door on the new one's different and the, uh, the, the brain of these ones are different. They're better at maintaining the temperature with the new ones. So this is a 400, a 450 mil deep oven with a 350 mil roughly opening wide this way. Now, I opted to get the biggest heat treating oven I could because obviously the bigger the oven is, the more shit you can fit in there. These days we're doing a lot of heat treating, so we're trying to do as many knives in here as possible. You can try and get away with the little ovens, you know, the little post box ovens. And if you're not doing a lot of knives, that's great. If you're only making 10, 15 knives a year, that is perfectly fine. But if you want to make more like 50 knives a year, I think the bigger oven's really where it's at. That means you can get 10, 15 knives in here at a time, heat treat them all at the same time, which makes it cheaper for cryo. I know a lot of the guys who are doing stainless want to do cryo. So if the cryo goes, that's cheap. You can just buy a whole bunch of dry ice, a liquid nitrate at once, and do batch work. It also means you're not running your oven as much. Now, the whole reason I bought this oven was because I was running into issues with my heat treat. So for the last five years now, I've been sending my stuff out for heat treat. And the problem with that is when you're going to a big commercial heat treat place, is they're not relying on nice little knife makers to sort of make their to make their bread. They're serving, you know, tool and die makers, you know, big business, mining, all that sort of stuff, where they've got hundred thousand dollars worth of business coming in. So you're walking in with your two hundred dollars worth of heat treating, they're they're not overly fussed about us. So if if they take our business, usually waiting weeks and weeks and weeks for stuff to come through because they're just waiting for there to be enough, let's say, D2 stock to make it worthwhile heat treating all in one batch and sort of slip our knives into that batch. So the problem I was having was obviously, whenever I'd heat treat something, it'd take up to a month to get stuff back from heat treaters. And that was really adding to my build time. I'd have to always quote out an extra month on my builds. And it also meant that I couldn't do classes. I couldn't exactly uh, you know, do a knife making class and have a month in between for the students to, to get their knives heated. It just wasn't feasible, um, which is why we got the oven. And it's one of the best things I did for my business. It meant we could do, we could do our builds a whole lot quicker, no issues, and everything sort of ran smoothly. Now it did take me a few tries to get my head around heat treating because I've never really done a lot of heat treating in the past, but now that I've done you know, a good few amount of blades, it's actually become, it's, it's very easy. So in the last five months, we've done probably close to 200 knives, if not more, and this oven's been working really well. You see there's some cracks in there. They're actually there when we started, and I've spoken, um, spoken to Paragon, and they're not anything to be concerned about. I'm also sure you could replace the inside of this if you need be. Now you'll see I've got these little doohickeys here, these little ceramic doohickeys. You can get these from like a, a kiln place or whatever, but they're really good to kind of keep your stock up in there because I'm just trying to protect that little, to protect that insulation. I don't want to get all scuffed up because that's really soft and obviously don't want to damage it. These ovens are not exactly cheap, so the more I can do to keep it safe, protect it, the better. Now, the insulation on this is really, really nice. It's shockingly good actually. I'm doing a lot of stainless steel, and on average, this oven's running about 1100 degrees Celsius. Now that's screaming fucking hot, and it actually doesn't get hot enough to actually burn anything up here. So you'll see, it'll get warm up top, which is actually why I do my, my tempering, my, sorry, my epoxy up top. I'll put all my epoxy and drying stuff up here, but it doesn't get hot enough to burn anything. It maybe gets 10 degrees hotter than the, uh, than the room temperature up here, but nothing hot enough to be seriously of an issue, which is really impressive, because this is getting screaming hot, now, the things I don't like about this kiln, the first thing is this door. Now, I believe in the newer options, the door's been changed, but the way the door comes out like this, I just don't like it. We're knife makers, we don't usually wear gloves, so if you're sticking your hand in here without gloves to pull something out, you've got a big amount of heat right up here, right against your hands. Now, this is obviously sorted if you wear proper gloves, but that's hard, right? <laughs> um, so that's not exactly ideal. Also, this door really needs some sort of soft close feature, especially doing classes. So the problem I ran into, especially with students, is that because the store doesn't have a soft close feature, I'm really worried about some student trying to pull his knife out as quickly as possible and then slamming the absolute shit out of this door when he goes to close it. You see, when I close it, I'm very gentle because this is all very fragile in here. The last thing I want is someone who doesn't know what they're doing, just slamming it at full force and smashing my insulation in here and all my bricks and that. I don't know if that's fixable. If it is fixable, I can't imagine it's cheap. So a soft close feature would be great. But that being said, I've seen the competitors' kilns. 
and this is a better option than what the competitors are doing at the moment. They've got, usually they've got a bit of a more of a, a fiddly system that I just don't like. Now mine is a touch screen kill. We're gonna see a nice little advertisement for Gamaco right there. And now uh, this is really good because you can actually program all your stuff in there, all your heat treat recipes and all that sort of stuff. And there's 30 odd options in there to program all your heat treat recipes. So I've got tempering cycles in there, I've got heat treat cycles in there, whatever you want. The touchscreen isn't super responsive, but it's good enough. Mine's also got Wi-Fi. I don't know why it's got Wi-Fi. I've never used Wi-Fi, but you know, for the young people, there's a Wi-Fi option. <laughs> if you insist on having a smart kiln, this one is a smart kiln. Now the questions everyone seems to ask about these ovens. Firstly, the running costs. Now, a sheet of stainless steel heat treating foil is about 200 bucks for a big roll, and that lasts a really, really long time. The point I've used about two rolls up, and that's heat treating a lot of knives. If you're not doing you know, hundreds of knives, you're gonna last a really long time. The second is power. Now, these are actually using a lot less power than I thought they would. This kiln is costing about 50 to 60 bucks a month uh, to run, which is obviously very subjective and it depends obviously where you are, what your power bills are and all that sort of stuff. But it's not unreasonable, especially with how much this oven works. We're turning this oven on probably three, four times a week to, to heat treat our knives. So it's, it is obviously pulling a lot of electricity and it's being ran a decent amount. Also, people always ask, can you temper in these ovens? You can temper in these ovens, and they're very good at tempering with these ovens. This is my favorite oven if I'm gonna go temper something because it actually, it'll turn itself off, and I've got no qualms about turning this oven on and leaving it temper overnight when no one's at the shop. It's very safe in that aspect. But, and a big but, it's not very good if you wanna heat treat something, get this oven stupid fucking hot, and then try and temper with it straight afterwards. It's just not gonna happen. These ovens, these ovens and the bricks in here get really hot and they hold on to that heat for a really long time, which means if you go in here and you temper, let's say D2, right? You get it to 1100 degrees Celsius, roughly. That oven's gonna be hot for hours and hours and hours. I don't care what you do, it's gonna be hot for way too long for us to be comfortable. So what I'll typically do if I have to use this oven is I'll open the door up and I hit it with compressed air and I'll put some alley plates inside the oven itself to try and take the heat out of the oven. But still, we're talking three, four hours until it's cold enough where we can actually realistically run a tempering cycle on this thing. So it's not really ideal. However, if you've got a little bit handy and you know Facebook Marketplace, you can get yourself a kitchen oven. This is from Facebook Marketplace. Um, it was 50 bucks and I had a friend of mine hook up a PID. So this is actually a very accurate oven here our tempering, which means you have two things running at the same time, it's a better option um, just to pick up a used oven, in my opinion. So I think that's pretty much everything there about the oven. They're really good, really handy. It's changed my business. They're not cheap. Um, this is about a $3,000 oven, but they do pay for themselves if you've got the work. Um, if you're a hobbyist, you don't need one of these ovens. You can go to a commercial heat treating place. You can go to another knife maker. I actually heat treat knives here for other makers in Bayes Order Victoria, so if you're in Victoria, you want the shit heat treated, I can sort you out. But you know, it obviously depends on what the situation is. It's a very nice to have, it's not mission critical, but bloody hell it's nice to have, you know? So yeah, thanks for watching the video. Um, if you've got any questions, shoot them in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.